Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today I'm using the new Urban Decay Naked Cherry collection to create this look, but I put a twist on it because I know a lot of you have been wanting me to do a tutorial with this collection or with this palette in particular. But ever since I saw Melissa Alatore's Get Ready With Me where she used this collection, I couldn't get it out of my head. I've always loved the way she does her blown out eye looks, but I always thought they might overwhelm me because her coloring is completely different from mine. She's probably 20 years younger than I am. I don't know her age, but I just wasn't sure if I could ever do those blown out eye looks like she does that are so so stunningly gorgeous on her stunningly beautiful face. So after I saw her get ready with me, I thought, what better time to try this? I actually filmed this intro already with a bare face because I thought this might end up being a disaster, but I really kind of like how it turned out. I do think it's important that you alter things for your face shape and your age or texture or anything you have going on that's individual to you when you're following any kind of tutorial. So if you wanna see how I got this kind of blown out look and what I think about this collection, just keep watching. actually start the tutorial obviously I won't have any makeup on but I forgot to go through the individual pieces before I started just chatting with you guys so it might be a little bit disjointed at the beginning but there is a palette in this collection which I'm sure a ton of you are already familiar with it's really pretty you know I don't usually go for all red pinkish tones but this is one that I've really been liking. It's really reflective, which is why it's kind of hard to catch it on camera. There's also a face palette, very easy, portable, lightweight. It's got a very wearable blush, surprisingly so. I thought it might be too deep. Well, I'll get into that a little bit later. It's got a champagne highlighter and then a light highlighter. There are three lip shades, which I'll go into at the end. The All Nighter Setting Spray that's cherry scented and two eyeliners. So it's a nice little collection. I like the packaging, I like the concept and let's get into it. This is the highlight and blush palette. I just think this palette is really adorable in general, the packaging and everything. And this is the super light highlight. It looks really pretty. I will be using it the blush and then the highlight that I'm going to be using now. I'm taking that peachy highlight along my cheekbones and it is really pretty. I'm using my Wayne Goss number no. two brush and I'm taking it on the points that she typically takes it. I wanted to go in order because she does do her face first. Sometimes she takes her highlight onto her brow bone. She doesn't in this particular one. Being over 40, I do not typically take my highlight along my nose and upper lip and chin and all that like she does. Um, I might just take a touch of it in this video. I know she likes more of a glossy, luminous look because she has drier skin than I do, but I'm probably just gonna maybe take a little bit of it on the upper lip and maybe just slightly down the nose. That scares me though. I'm gonna start out with my Sigma F10 and go in with the blush. This blush looks like it's pretty pigmented, so I'm gonna tap it off. And this brush does pick up a lot of pigment, and she kind of taps it on. I've never really applied blush the way she does with tapping it on, but I'm gonna do it that way since we're following her look. I've gone back in a second time and I didn't have to tap my brush off. So it's not nearly as scarily pigmented as it looks in the pan. It's actually a really, really pretty blush shade. I thought it might be too dark, but it's not. Now something I do is typically take my blush kind of here and here, but we're not gonna do that today. So she takes the same highlighter brush that she used before and she takes the white highlighter and uses it kind of as a blush topper. I'm gonna do the same thing with a very light hand. That's really pretty and luminous, but I would recommend using a light hand with that. This is a really pretty blush palette. Can you see that? It's pretty. This is a really, really pretty palette. It's so reflective, it's really hard to convey how pretty it is. The first shade I'm gonna use is Juicy, and I'm gonna put that into the crease in transition. And because this is a more blown out look, I'm gonna take my Sigma E25, which is a bigger brush than I would normally use. It's got a taper to it. You can see it's wider there and flatter there. And I'm gonna use that to run that same juicy shade along the lower lash line. I used my Sigma E40 for the transition a while ago. I forgot to tell you guys. I'm kind of connecting the two. Next, I'm going in with Devilish to kind of deepen that up in the outer corner and slightly into the crease and along the lower lash line as well. 
And because I have a hooded eye, I do kind of bring that up a little bit more. She might keep it more localized to the crease, but because when I open my eye, you might not be able to see it, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. I just used my Sigma E30 pencil brush along the lower lash line to just bring that devilish shade a little bit closer, but still kind of blow it out a little bit, but I didn't want to totally cover up the juicy shade that I used earlier. Now I'm going to go in with this deeper shade, the deepest shade in the palette, Privacy, with my Sigma E45 brush, and I'm really going to deepen that outer corner. It's important if you have hooded eyes to keep looking straight forward in your mirror to make sure that you can actually see where you're placing this color. And I'm also going to take that on the outer third of this lower lash line. And I'm going to take the Urban Decay brush and just kind of blend that a little bit. This is where this gets really intense for me because I don't typically use a deep shade like Drunk Dial all across my lid. But she does, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm taking this on my Sigma E58. I tapped off the excess, and I'm also wetting it with my MAC Fix Plus. I may end up going in with my finger. She uses a brush, but sometimes with shades like this, I really like to go in with my finger. Now, Melissa didn't do a brow bone highlight, but I'm going to take Hot Spot and just put it lightly on the brow bone because I feel like my eyes in particular really need that. And then I'm going to line and do mascara and then come back and do a little bit of highlighting around the eyes. And we'll see what this ends up looking like in the end. I lined with the 24-7 liner in Black Market and smudged it out with the Delium Tools number 718. It's their tiny pencil brush. I was gonna just line my waterline like Melissa does, but because my eyes are a little more downturned and not quite as elongated, I did take it out just a little bit past the outer corner and smudged it out. And I think it just works out a little bit better for my eye shape. Like I said in the beginning, you do kind of have to alter things for your particular eye shape when you're following tutorials. It can be kind of hard to know what to do exactly. I think just as you get to know your eye shape a little bit better over time, you just kind of learn what you want to do. I'm going to mix the two highlighters here, just like she does, and use it for the inner corner using my Sonia G Smudger 2 brush. The mascara that I used is the Hourglass Caution, which I love. I do think you could definitely do false lashes with this look and it would look really, really nice. So the lip I chose is the same one Melissa applied. It's Juicy, which is their metalized formula. It's so creamy though, and it's not so much a metal as it is just a really shiny formulation. I really like it. I feel like it's peachy toned, so it brings out that warmth that you apply if you do apply it at all, but it could go with cool tones as well because there is kind of a pinkish lavender reflect in there that's not so obvious. It just looks really shiny and juicy, and yet it's neutral enough to go with anything. I really like this lipstick shade. I'm gonna show you the other two lipstick shades as well. So tell me first, are you comfortable doing a look like this that's kind of blown out a little more dramatic in a different shade than say, you know, your neutral browns or grays or blacks? This is something that's a little different for me. I definitely wouldn't do it for daytime, but I don't think it completely overwhelms me. Let me know what you think. I love Urban Decay eyeliners in general. I'm always happy to have more to add to my collection. The purple is Love Drug. The black is called Black Market. If you're familiar with their Zero Black shade, it's a deep, deep black. This one is a little bit softer than that, but not quite a charcoal either. And Love Drug, it's more on the plum side than just a straight purple. They're really great shades. I think anyone could wear these shades and they would go with multiple eye looks. I don't know if my setting spray isn't as strong as everybody else's or not, but mine does not have that strong chloroseptic scent that I keep hearing everybody say that this setting spray has. Mine just has a faint cherry scent. So supposedly this is supposed to be formulated the same as the regular all-nighter setting spray. It's just got a cherry scent, but mine is so, so faint it doesn't even really matter and it doesn't linger on my face either. So you have two metalized lipsticks. These two here are metalized. That's Juicy and Devilish. 
And then cherry. I don't know why they named this cherry and not black cherry. I mean, that looks like a black cherry. That is a cream formula. I love Urban Decay's cream formulas. I have the Juicy on like you guys know, and I'm gonna put the other two on so you can see what they look like. You know how earlier I said I really couldn't tell the difference between the Juicy metalized lipsticks and like a creamy formula lipsticks? It was when I removed it, I could tell the difference. It left glimmer particles behind on my lips. Now, these do last a long time on the lips, but as they wear away, the glimmer particles do show up, which is kind of something that I don't particularly like. This is a really interesting pink. It's a pink that I probably would not wear, to be honest. Now, you don't feel a grittiness, which is nice, but there's more of a glimmer, I feel like, in Devilish than there is in Juicy. And when you wipe them away, you're gonna have glimmer on your lips. This is cherry or black cherry, which is what I wanna call it. It's not a shade I would ever wear. This is not my comfort zone, especially the dark with the dark, but I could see that someone who likes darker lipstick would probably really enjoy this shade. Great for fall, comfortable on the lips because it is their cream formula, just not a shade that is in my comfort zone. It's just a little bit more high maintenance than what I like to wear. So that is the Urban Decay Naked Cherry line. This is the look, well, let's just pick that out. This is the eye look that I really wanted to focused on today just to show you something a little bit different. So I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think? Let me know below. Are you planning on getting anything from this collection? What do you want to see from me next as far as types of looks? What palettes do you want to see me use? That kind of thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.